Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel, Nonstop Talking with your girl here, Vivian Liu. Today I am going to be filming a book unhaul. I did some spring cleaning recently and honestly last year with the pandemic, I actually got to knock out quite a few of my physical TBR and you know, I read more. There's obviously books I didn't like and I don't need on my shelves and I felt like with the pandemic, especially with a lot of the older books that I have on my shelves, I feel like if I did read it during that time, I probably will never ever find time um, to pick it up. I know that my neighbors are doing grass work right now. It's like on and off and I'm really sorry about that. Um, but there's nothing I can do. I have a big bag um, of books here. Yes, I've already put it in this bag. Um, so I'm just gonna kind of slowly take them out and then put them back in and tell you what books I am going to be unhauling. So the first books on top in this bag are my manga collection. So here I have DramaCon 1, 2, and 3. I read this when it first came out um, and I read volumes 1 and 2 and I really enjoyed them. I was really young then um, and I never got around to picking up volume 3. I saw this at um, Book Off and so I picked it up and decided to reread the series and finally read volume 3 and I feel like they're good uh, but they're not as like good as I remembered and I don't think I would ever pick them up again and I really don't need them on my shelves like they're just there's no longing here so hopefully someone else will pick this up and um, enjoy it more than I did upon my reread. The next ones are Card Captor Sakura Cardcaptor Sakura Clear Cards Volumes 1, 2, and 3. Um, I was really excited when um, it was announced that we we're going to get more Cardcaptor Sakura. It was a childhood fave. However, I feel like as I was reading these, and I still have been reading them, but like as Kindle. Um, I feel like I don't need the physical copies. I don't have as strong as attachment to this uh, clear card continuation as I did with the original. And granted, they're very cute. Very cute. And, you know, clamp is just top-notch stuff. But, yeah, I, I just feel like I don't really need these. Next, I have the last manga I'm going to unhaul. Yes. And it's The Ancient Magus Bride. Um, I read the I read the first volume. I can't talk today. I read the first volume, um, and I really love like the art. I think the art is like really pretty, and it has like dark fairy tale vibes to it. Um, but I wasn't like in love, so I kept reading it um, through the library. And the further in I got, the more I like just lost interest in it. And since now I know I don't really like the series that much, I don't feel like I need to keep any physical volumes that I have. Next I have the 12 days of Dash and Lily. I accidentally bought this in preparation for the Netflix live adaptation and I didn't realize that it was actually uh, the second book. It's the sequel. Uh, so that was really dumb and now that I've watched um, the Netflix adaptation which I really enjoyed by the way I feel like if they come out with more I would just probably watch it I would never read it anymore next I have Hunger by Roxanne Gay I really like her writing I really like the topics that she discusses um, it's very deep and profound and eye-opening but I don't think I would ever pick this up again and I think it could go to someone else who probably would be able to get more from it. Next book I have is Until Friday Night. I really, 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 really thought I was going to love this. I was so excited for it. Um, but I don't know. It, it was very like lukewarm, mediocre to me that I didn't even care to continue on with the rest of the series. So I don't need this first volume. Next I have Truth Witch. This book has been on my shelf for a really really long time and I finally went um, and pick up the audiobook uh, during the pandemic and it was good but I just for some reason I kept um, 
being like detached from the story like i it couldn't hook my attention and i kept was like when is it gonna end when is it gonna end um so i won't be continuing on with the rest of the series and like i said if i'm not continuing i don't need the first book physical copy next i have Mao's last dancer i bought this on a whim um online and i didn't realize how thick it is it's it's big and i honestly wasn't that much interested in it but i thought it would be like a short quick read about this like real person uh, but look at that size i was super intimidated and there is a movie um so if i ever want to go around understanding this person's story um i'll probably watch the movie instead in all honesty next um these are just some books from more of like my childhood bookshelves that i'm getting rid of um one is silent to the bone i remember reading this in maybe before middle school or maybe in middle school um i think like my principal might have gifted me this book and i remember being like blown away when i read it and i i think i still remember the ending or the twist i think yes no yeah i think i do yeah um so i i actually think this is really good but obviously like i feel like i'm i'm too old for it now and i think it could go into better younger hands so it's target audience same thing with this it's um off my um childhood bookshelf i'm pretty sure i read this um what's it called millie's unsettled season um I, I actually like have no recollection of what this is about but I'm pretty sure I read this because like honestly I have no recollection of what it's about like I don't need it on my shelf. Next I have Attachments by Rainbow Rao. Love the author but love her YA stuff. I've read um, Landline, didn't like it. Read Attachments, loved it more but didn't like love it. So I just feel like with her adult stuff, her older adult stuff, I like don't really care for and so I don't need a copy. Next, this might hurt a few people and I'm really really sorry. Uh, this is The Perks of Being a Wallflower. This is one of my friends Melissa's favorite books. I never read it um, as a teenager and I know that's when most people read it and they probably got different feels from it um reading it as like an adult and it this is like one of the books you know i finally got to that was like on my long tb or old tbr um that i finally picked up during the pandemic and i don't know i thought i was gonna like really love it like with the way people talk about it i thought this is gonna be my jam i'm just it's just gonna make me cry and it did make me cry um at certain points and it did make me emotional but i didn't feel like it hit me in a way that i was expecting it to like yeah it just it kind of slightly underwhelmed me so i don't need it around next i have jacob have i love i've read um this author katherine patterson's um other books what were they um the gilly hopkins and then um terabithia and i loved both of them a lot so um i had this like secret like reading goal last year that I was gonna like pick up more of her stuff just to read um and I read this and this just did not age well like it's kind of weird and gross at certain points I guess it's just like my modern eyes and mindset didn't vibe with it and now i just feel like okay yeah i have terabithia and gilly hopkins on my shelf and that's it i don't i don't need to read anymore i don't need to pick up anymore and i definitely don't need to keep jacob have i loved anymore next this book is technically my brother's but um he kind of gave it to me uh, I think he read this for school and he really enjoyed it and there's like some highlights here um, that are his um, and I didn't read the physical book I actually picked up um, the audiobook the anniversary edition with like the special stuff at the end um, and I thought this was really really like profound really really deep moving and there are certain like quotes or like certain lines that really just would stick with someone um 
but I don't need a physical copy of it, I feel like. Um, it could definitely go to someone who um, probably, like, could better annotate this and therefore, like, have um, a longer-lasting impression to someone else. Next, I have um, Karen Slaughter's uh, The Kept Woman. Um, so I, there was like a period where I was like, yeah, I want to read more like thrillers. So I picked this up not knowing that I think it's like the eighth book in a series. I don't know. I think they could be like standalone, standalones, like with James Patterson books. Um, I'm not too sure. I didn't go in depth researching that. I just knew it was the eighth book and I like reading things in chronological order and it really bothers me when I read things out of order I just I just can't so I w if I do read this I'll probably have to get the first book and from the first book to eighth book it's gonna be a long time before I pick this up so I don't need this just collecting dust on my shelf for now next I have uh, not your sidekick uh, by CB Lee I really liked the premise of this and I actually really like like the touch and feel it um, has like that graphic novel s kind of vibes to it um, and I was like really really excited for it look at how cute the font is in the black um, but it didn't impress me I was like kind of disappointed I thought I think at the time I thought the world building was a little bit shoddy um, I read this a while back and I've uh, I've like kept it on my shelf for a while just thinking like maybe I'll continue with the series but I probably won't and this can go to someone who will enjoy it unlike me not that I didn't enjoy it I just was slightly disappointed by it. I had higher expectations and next these are in a series I have a study in Charlotte and the last of August I really like uh, Sherlock Holmes and I love like Sherlock Holmes like spin-off stories and whatnot so I was really excited about this um, especially because um, Holmes is a teenage girl and then Watson is a teenage boy and they get into mischief but honestly I think the first book was okay but as it continues because I've I picked up the audiobooks after this um, it just it got a little bit too crazy for me, got a little bit too unbelievable for me, lost me. Um, so I'm good. I'm okay. I don't need the physical books reminding me that in the end it disappointed me. Next, this, I feel really, really sad. Uh, this was the first book I bought at the, uh, the Rip Bodice, the romance bookstore. I got to visit there uh, recently and it was such a cute bookstore I highly recommend you go check it out um, but I bought this there um, and I uh, read it after and it was good it wasn't great so same thing I don't need it on my shelves because I'll never ever reread it because it was only good not great um, but I do highly recommend people you know pick this up um, it was cute I just wish I loved it more but you know it's always really nice to see um, a plus size um, heroine in your romance novels. Next, this is one of those books I was kind of like talking about how like it's been on my TBR, like physical TBR forever and I've never ever picked it up and if I wasn't going to pick it up during the pandemic when I had a ton of time to read, I will never ever pick this up. And this is um, Girls Like Us and that's, that's the reason, that's it. Next, uh, this was one of my friends, uh, Nicole's, um, I guess, like, liked books when she was a teenager, like in high school and stuff like that. I heard her mention, like, the title in passing, and, like, I, like, remembered it in the back of my head, and I saw it for cheap, and I was like, yeah, let me pick it up. Um, but I, like, have no interest in reading these types of stories anymore. Um, so hopefully it can go to someone who will have interest in it. Okay, these two books are also in a series and it's uh, Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children and Hollow City. I read this uh, a few years back and I actually really liked it. I love the concept, I love the photos and I actually, oh there's paper. I read this right before uh, the movie came out 
and I was and then I heard like the movies are completely different from the books so I was like yeah I didn't want to watch the movie I'll continue on with the series um and I never did I actually bought this at book off um and yeah I, I just I never did and now it's been so many years later like when was the movie even released was when I read this um so it's been so many years I like have no feelings left for it I will never pick it up um so it's time to go to someone who will pick it up uh this next book I've kept on my shelves for a really long time I bought it right when it was released and I love the cover I love the cover so much like look at this look at this look how cute that is and th the inside is actually really nice it's blue um and i just i love like everything about this uh besides the story i thought the story was like look at this i thought the story was just meh and i was hoping like as it goes on it will you know get better and i would love the rest of the series more and would feel the need or want to keep this first book but I would say like I think I've read two and three now um the first book is the best and I already felt like the first book was just good not great and I know I've been keeping this because of the cover but it's time to let it go um especially since April is my um, birthday month oh, don't fall. Um, April is my birthday month, so I will, or I am anticipating that I will get a lot of books as birthday gifts. Um, so I do need to make space on my shelves for the new books. Next is um, All Fall Down by Ali Carter. I love Ali Carter. I would say she is my favorite. I would middle grade lower younger YA um author I have all like her I have her what's it the Gallagher Girl series and then the one with the heist and um not if I save you first I have a few of our other books and I have them in like different covers different editions um because I just really like her stuff um and I finally went around and picked up this I think this is like one of her like to her newer series and I didn't love the first book but I kept it around thinking like maybe the second and third book would be better honestly this trilogy as a whole was very underwhelming I, I didn't like it mainly because I didn't like the main character I found the main character to be really annoying and so it was really hard for me to like get into the book and to support her when I was just like oh it's so tedious being in her mind um so I'm really sad to you know let this go because now my Ellie Carter um, portion collection of my bookshelf is incomplete it feels like but there's no point in keeping a series that you didn't love or keeping a book that you didn't love next I have on the edge I bought this a while back when I was like really in love with um, what's her name Simone Uglis um, I was really in love with her stuff um, and I bought this back because it gave me like similar vibes, similar plot and I think it might have been Goodreads that like recommended it to me. Um, but I realized one thing, I'm too old to read these, like I'm, I'm just not the demographic, the target audience for it anymore. Next I have uh, Misery by Stephen King. This is a uh, one of my friends, uh, Jenny's favorite King book, I think, or one of her favorite King books. And um, she also really loves the movie. I did watch the movie after reading the book. Um, <laughs> I fell asleep while watching the movie. <laughs> I rewatched it. I did from the beginning and like the, the second time around. I think I was just too tired the first time watching it. Um, but the book, yes, um, uh, I thought it was actually really good. I actually like this more than it, and it was my first Stephen King book, and Misery is my second Stephen King book, but there's just something about Stephen King's books where, like, there's always portions or parts of it that you just feel like, what, <laughs> you know? Um, so you can't, like, I feel like I, 
I can't love it as like a whole. Like there's only certain bits and parts. Um, same with this. Um, there are certain bits and parts that I was just like, wow, oh my god. Uh, but like as a whole, I don't need it. Next, this is also um, my brother's book and he doesn't want it. And um, so I'm helping him unhaul it. I think he picked this up along with another book that I've unhauled before um, for school. And yeah, like, these are not books I would read, so I don't need to keep it if he's giving it to me. So it's, it's going bye-bye. Uh, next. Okay, I talked about this in my last unhaul, um, saying that I wasn't sure if I was gonna unhaul it or not. So I did keep it. It's still here with me. Um, but now that I've sat on it since the last unhaul, I just, I don't think I'll continue with the series. Like honestly, I think, I think it's way too many books for a book I felt like was a 3.5. I think I gave this a 3.5. Um, yeah, I know a lot of people really love this and I feel like if I was to unhaul it, like there'd be people who would see this and be like, oh my god, it's like in such awesome quality at a second hand bookstore, I will, you know, jump at the chance to buy it. So that's for those people. Uh, next is also books in a series. So I have like a small little Harry Potter collection um, on my bookshelf. Um, and, um, I've always kept this book. I actually bought this the day it came out. I drove to Barnes and Noble and I bought it. <laughs> Fucking disappointing. I don't know why I did it. I bought it and I came home and I read it and I hated it. Oh, man. But I kept it. I kept it all this time, uh, because I felt like my Harry Potter collection would be incomplete without it. But... I'm older now. I am not so uptight about collections needing to be complete, especially with um, limited space. Um, so I don't need this. And also, I was looking through my childhood bookshelves, and I have a very damaged paperback um, Chamber of Secrets that I no longer need because I have all the books in hardcover now. And I also have, I don't know, one is uh, Prisoner of Azkaban. This one is missing uh, the dust jacket and I don't like that it's missing the dust jacket. So maybe someone would want, oh I don't know why I didn't just read it from here. Um, but yeah maybe someone would want, you know, Prisoner of Azkaban missing the book sleeve. Um, and that's it for the first bag. I thought there would be a lot, but it wasn't like that much. Uh, but that's it for the first bag. I need to go and get the second bag and I'll be back. Give me a second. Okay, I'm back with my second bag. This one is not really that interesting, honestly. It's just books from um, my childhood bookshelf. Firstly, am I able to grab all of this in one go? I used to love Chicken Soup for the Soul. I have other volumes too, um, but these are the ones that I found. Um, and yes, I used to love Chicken Soup for the Soul, and um, I have a lot of them. But uh, I feel like adult me no longer cares to read them. Like, I have no interest in them anymore um i posted on my instagram and some of my friends um are um requesting that i put them aside or some volumes aside for them which i will do um so they're going to good homes and yeah i mean i've always like there's always a like a spot i guess in my reading heart for chicken soup for the soul because I don't know I used to just love them so much and I read so many of them but yeah like if you were to give me one right now like I'd be like okay but I wouldn't read it that was like a weird explanation so honestly like in short I used to love chicken soup for the soul I used to collect them I have a ton of them um, but now that I'm older I don't read them I would never read them and it's time to give them to a new home 
next uh, this is my sister's book she um, had to read it for school Ooh, this was I think is this Borders um, 1395 she bought it for then um, it's based on a real teacher and my sister um, studied child development so she read this um, last time around I asked her if she wanted to still keep this and she said she did and then this time around I'm like hey do you still want to keep this and she said she didn't so off it goes and then this is not part of the childhood collection but this is one of the books I um, had to pick up it even has the school bookstore um, when I was in college I studied um, kind of something similar to East Asian language and culture um, mainly focus on Chinese and Japanese and um, I have a lot of books like these that I've kept and I just especially with the ones that are like literature um, or poetry I've kept those just because I like them and maybe one day I'll just like feel the urge to just like read some Chinese literature um, but these history books I I eh, I'm okay I don't need it I don't know why I kept it I was like oh I'll get back to it um, I mean I do know why I kept it but I mean I don't need them anymore for where my life is going now and um, I think this might be my aunt's book it's like super old and like looks like it wants to die um i don't even know what that price tag says it's saying uh, but yes i think it's my aunt's book none of us want it um i don't even think places would even take this um but it's called sour sweet by timothy mo i've never heard of this author and he's has an, another book according to this um, what is it about at the center of 60s London, the busy Chinese community lives by its own precise and violent rules, flourishing like a spiky, brilliant crystal garden in the murky waters of Soho, pitch into an alien city which is neither hostile nor friendly, but very strange and very foreign. The Chen family prospers by deftly and sometimes incongru incongruously. <laughs> Uh, blending tradition and opportunity. I don't speak English. Uh, but no private family lives beyond the reach of the largest and most powerful Chinese family, the triads. It actually sounds kind of interesting, but I'm just kind of turned off also by how old it is. Um, so yes. Uh, next, these are just um, books, um, like I said, off the children's bookshelf um, that I am getting rid of. I have here uh, The Trumpet and the Swan. I don't even know if I've ever read this. And then I have True Stories about Abraham Lincoln. Look at this cute little book about Abraham Lincoln. Um, next I have Monster Manor. This feels more like my uh, brother's book than mine. But oh, this is actually a really cute illustration. So hopefully some kid will get excited over that. And then I have Circle of Magic, Secret of the Tower. I think that like cover looks super cringy. Oh, there's some illustrations in here. Oh yeah, this is my brother's book. <laughs> it has those, um, what's it? Uh, this book belongs to once you buy it from like the book fair. Um, and then I think this might be my sister's, but I'm not too sure. Um, it's a rhyming dictionary. Um, and it's super old and it's pretty worn um, but yeah learn maybe some kid can learn some rhyming think they could become a poet uh, and I think that is it I might go through the childhood um, bookshelves a little bit more and then maybe probably see if my brother and sister have anything else um, they want to clear out um, but I think that's it for my spring cleaning book unhaul um, and oh man it's been so long since I filmed a video I couldn't do my makeup today I don't even remember what my outro is but it's coming back to me <laughs> there we go like comment subscribe see you in my next video whenever that is bye